So the procedure I wanted to talk to you about is a procedure that we use for mucogingival defects when you have no attaching keratinized tissue. Like in this case, where this patient came in with the tissue basically peeling off, there was some type of frenopole, pull, mucosal pull, uh, of course, combined with poor oral hygiene, it was a plaque trap and actually associated with a lot of pain and infection. And you can see that the tissue is a little bit white and cyanotic. So the best option for this case, and it's actually pretty common, and you have patients with mucogingival problems on lower incisors, is to use a free gingival graft, or it's called the epithelial palatal graft, which is... Is a, a, an old procedure. It's, it's, it was invented in 1962. If you're not familiar with it, go on YouTube, look up for look look for my video on the free gingival graft. It has quite a bit of views, and explain all the details and all the steps that you uh, that you need in order to perform this procedure. And it's again very very simple. The way this procedure works, you make the first incision at the mucogingival junction, and everybody can see the recession and the minimally to no attached tissue. And once you make this incision at the mucogingival junction, you can reflect the split thickness flap and depithelize the attached tissue. And what I do with the flap, I suture it with gut 5 sutures in an apical direction. So what I'm basically doing, I'm exposing the underlying tissue, the connective tissue from underneath that has really good vascularity. I'm depithelializing the whatever existing attached tissue there is so I can then harvest a free gingival graft from the patient's palate. And, and the best place to harvest is from the flat part of the palate, not from the rugae, and staying away from the soft palate, typically a, a rectangular shape of graft. And this graft is considered a superficial graft. We're going to place it superficially on top of the recipient side. And the reason this works so great is that there's tremendous vascularity. We're exposing all the small little capillaries in the connective tissue. There is a lot of plasma. So this graft uh, lives for a few days on just plasmatic circulation, stays alive. Of course, we can't just leave it like that. We have to suture it um, with some interrupted sutures on the coronal part. And this type of suture delia is a proline 6O, and I'm suturing only to the attached tissue. And you see in this case, only five or six sutures. Don't suture at the apical part because then you'll have the mucosa pulling on the graft, so it's not necessary. And that's typically enough. Some finger pressure. And the secret sauce is really the periacryl. You need to have this uh, medical grade cyanoacrylate in your office. Uh, this little bottle needs to be refrigerated, but it lasts you probably two years. It'll probably expire before you finish the bottle. So it comes in a bottle. It's medical grade cyanoacrylate. It comes with uh, another device that looks white and small little wells and some plastic pipettes. So you'll you'll take this cyanoacrylate in a pipette and just apply it on the graft. Now I'm not talking about major amounts. Just a couple of drops in between the sutures, right on top of the graft, nothing underneath. And what this what this sanoculate does, it basically glues the graft into position. You can see that the soft tissue graft is looks uh, almost like frosted because it's glued in. So, so you have to um, you have to be um, you know really careful with this periacryl because if you put too much in there, uh, you can have the patient's lip glued onto the graft or the teeth. So a couple of little drops, and I promise you this graft is not successful 100%, but probably close, maybe 99%. A week later, you'll see that the epithelial tissue is going to slough off, and that's totally normal. It doesn't look as pretty the first week. Then you can take the sutures after two weeks. You'll start seeing that the graft starts to keratinize, and a few weeks later, you will see that this graft is quite well incorporated. You'll see the, the border between the old and new tissue. And I call it a functional repair. We're increasing the zone of attached tissue, more keratinized tissue. We can get some root coverage. It actually improves after two or three years. And you can get a great result. And it's a very simple procedure that any dentist uh, can do. Now, I'm going to answer a couple of questions. Hightam is asking, what about a periopac over a graft? 
Uh, I don't use a PRA pack. It's not necessary, in my opinion, for the success. If you'd like to use a pack, it's not a mistake. The only problem with a pack, if you think about it, if you ever use the, a PRA pack or a periodontal dressing, it's the same thing. You place it, first of all, it's very hard to retain it. You have to wedge it in between the teeth, number one. Number two, the week later, when you remove the pack, as you remove it, you have to open the windows because it smells so bad underneath. Why? Because there's no salivary flow. There is bacteria festering right on top of this graft. So I don't see any need to do to use a perio pack. Okay. Now, uh, Dr. Lee is asking, how do you create keratinous tissue on the lingual of number 30 implant uh, where, where there's a lot of food trap? Uh, so grafting on the lingual aspect is not possible, unfortunately, at the moment. Not recommended because you can't make a split thickness incision. It's actually risky to operate in the floor of the mouth. So unfortunately, that's the limitation of treatment. Uh, Dr. Hung Vu is asking if we can, if it hurts to use the peri pack. If it uh, if it hurts to use it, no, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. I think it just smells so bad, and I don't think um, it's necessary. Uh, Angam is asking, how do you graft in case of a caries root? So of course you have to clean up the caries and see how far it goes. If it's a very shallow cavity, uh, you can still graft on top of it. If it's a cavity that extends pretty deep into the tooth, unfortunately grafting is not indicated. So that's what we call limitation of treatment. So this is the free gingival graft, very simple. Uh, we can get very predictable results. I'd like to say over 90%, maybe 95. I'd like to say 99 or even, but uh, why don't you start with the first one? Uh, do your first five and 10, and then you get the hang of it.